Right, so episode three. Um, this episode is all about the, uh, the crankshaft position sensor. Um, as mentioned before, we're using Triumph TT600 parts. And um, one of the big unknowns here is the crankshaft sensing. Because it doesn't have camshaft sensing, it ha only has a wheel for the crankshaft. And um, it's, it's in a location that I don't want to replicate on the GS550. So with the uh, TT600, it's on the uh, left-hand side of the engine. Um, it's quite a big wheel. It sits behind the um, starter clutch, the, the sprag clutch, uh, and the alternator rotor. Um, it's quite a large sort of housing, so it's, it's quite a big sort of diameter. Unfortunately, I don't have one to actually uh, measure it and work out exactly how big it is. All I've had to really go on is some pictures off the internet. There's a picture over there. I don't know how visible that is. But uh, that's the best sort of image I could find. I was able to use this to work out how many teeth it needs and... Um, what the um, modifications are for the uh, the ECU to work out the datum or top dead center on, on the cylinders. Um, it has one tooth removed and one tooth gap filled in. That's what they've done here. Um, so fairly easy to replicate if I had the space for it. Now this is where I like it to go on the crank on the crankcase. Um, this is where the uh, um, points normally live um, on the opposite side now we're on the right hand side of the engine and this is the cover that fits over there under normal circumstances I would prefer all of this look stock and and not look really modified and um, something's obviously going to have to be modified because I've got to fit this in there somewhere uh, I do think though it'll be easier to get this all set up if I modify the crankcase and I have the rotor in a position where I can install the uh, the sensor and set it all up, rather than try and put the put the sensor in here somewhere in the cover, because then installing the cover it'd be very difficult to work out how how the spacing, what the, what the air gap is, and all of that. And um, incidentally, this is an inductive sensor, not a hall sensor, so um, it doesn't read or provide a simple square wave signal to the ECU. It's actually a, like a sine wave. So it doesn't have clearly defined on or off. It's uh, so the uh, ECU has to then interpret that signal in some way. I don't know whether that's going to make it easier or harder to get this to work. But um, I will say that type of sensor is has, has much better heat tolerance. So um, on, on the GS engine, since it's air cooled, I suspect it's going to run hotter um, engine temperature compared to a liquid cooled engine so having the heat tolerance is probably a, going to be a bonus so yeah so I had to translate that into something that fits into there and I don't know how well you can scale something like this down and um, if you look really carefully at the image you can see that the tooth is quite a bit narrower than the gap in between the teeth which tells me that that this sensor has effectively a beam and if you don't make the tooth gap wide enough it won't register it as a gap now when you're scaling that down that can obviously cause huge huge headaches um, also bear in mind I haven't actually had one to measure so th th there isn't a lot of science or engineering in this this is more a sort of guesswork and hope for the best kind of thing. So, so I did a diagram of of the uh, original Triumph um, rotor as much as I could work out what the dimensions were by eyeballing a picture off the internet, and then I came up with this design, which is scaled down to a diameter that would then fit inside there. Bearing in mind you don't have all of this space. The space is actually quite limited in here. Um, but anyway, this is what I came up with. It doesn't look right because it does look like there's massive gaps and very thin teeth. Um, I really, I just, just estimating 
that the gap size needs to remain the same and if you have to change something to shrink it down size you'd have to alter the size of the tooth well what I did was a bit of both but I reduced the size of the gap much less than the size of the tooth so we've scaled down something we don't know the dimensions of in a way we don't know is going to work into something that we are not sure about any of its properties so but what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to machine one of these out of steel obviously it has to be steel it can't be a softer material so I'm not a huge fan of machining steel but it needs doing um, so I'll machine one of these out of steel and then I'll have to uh, connect everything up and plug it in get it spinning and hopefully we'll see some life out of the fuel injectors and also I'd like it to register the RPM in the ECU so that'll tell us that it's all working correctly and um, that's the next thing to do so I'm going to go and machine, machine some bits and um, and we'll come back to that so here we are after machining uh, this is just the offcut a piece of steel tubing square tubing I did it in uh, four parts in the end because it was just easier that way um, and it suited the material so it just needs to be assembled now onto the um, 3d printed hub which will then easily be clamped in the lathe so yeah it fits okay and uh, and here you can see my sort of dilemma about tooth versus gap um, you can see I've made the teeth quite small so that I can have the gap fairly large but when you look at it compared to the sensor it looks about right to be honest so hopefully it works we'll see soon enough this is the setup in the lathe just clamped in the chuck and then I've just got a bit of round bar sticking out with the uh, sensor stuck on with some cable ties gonna have a, a go at waking these fuel injectors up um, so first thing obviously we need to power this up get it connected to the uh, tune ECU again and um, bring it all to life so right got power uh, let's connect Yep, little yellow light it says we are we are good to go Wait for that to start populating Struggling to connect today. Ah, right, there we go. Right, so we've populated that with loads of uh, useful information. Uh, I'll do our standard test. Yeah, throttle position sensor is registering um, movement there. So all we still need to do then is get this thing spinning and see if we can get something out of these uh, injectors. Well, I can hear that. Definitely, definitely uh, working. The injectors are definitely firing, and we're seeing an RPM on the uh, on the red counter 560 to 570, which is exactly what it should be for uh, for this lathe, because that's the speed it's going to be running at. So while we're while we're here, what we can do is um, we'll wind this back a bit and see how far away we can get before we stop getting um, injection pulses which will tell us what our maximum air gap can be 
Let's uh, let's do that. Right, it's become unreliable now. I can hear the injectors are, are uh, a bit erratic, but we're a good sort of three mil away. So I think if we stick to about a mil and a half of uh, air gap between the, the sensor and the rotor, we'll probably be good because, um, yeah, we're, we're quite a lot further than that away right now. It's definitely working. Uh, we have we have life from the injectors, so that tells me, um, yeah, this is this could all work. It's a really good milestone. That next thing, we'll take a look at the um, ignition coils. I have some on order, TT six hundred coils. We'll get four of them connected up and see if we can get some spark. And um, if we can do that, then it's time to start modifying the engine to to suit all of these bits and working out where everything's going to go. But yeah, success. Thanks for watching.